our main story now, teeth. If you like solid food, you're going to need them. <laughs> For years, we've been told to take care of them. What should you brush with? Fluoroguard! The fluoride in fluoroguard gets into the enamel like liquid gets into this chalk. I thought my teeth were clean, but my dentist said no, they're still plaque. This man is a dentist, so we can't show you his face on television. Mm, no, I think you're getting dentist confused with registered sex offender. <laughs> <laughs> Morning, Rob. But the crazy thing about teeth is, as far as Medicare is concerned, they're not even part of our body. And that leaves us struggling to pick up the tab. When was the last time you saw a dentist and how much did it cost? According to the Institute of Health and Welfare, nearly a third of us say the cost of a trip to the dentist stops us from getting treatment. Yeah, but if I pay to get my teeth checked, they're going to find something wrong and then I'm going to have to pay to fix it. You can, you can see the problem I got here, Jenny. It's a vicious cycle, yeah? So what happens when people avoid going to the dentist to save money? In the 2015-16 financial year, there were 67,266 potentially preventable hospitalisations for oral health issues, and almost a third were children under nine years old. Without universal access to dental care, the difference for rich and poor is huge. Just ask self-appointed Shadow Minister for Teeth, Andrew Lee. If your household income is above $80,000, you're likely to be missing an average of three teeth due to tooth decay. So, a little something like this. But if your household makes less than $20,000, that number increases to 10 missing teeth. The rich have seven more teeth than the poor. <laughs> when did we start letting the rich negatively gear teeth? <laughs> yeah, these are my primary teeth and these are just my investment teeth. I've, I've got, got quite a large tooth folio. <laughs> the number of teeth missing from your head can even be an indication of how long you'll live. But when you can't afford dental care, that's the least of your troubles. Valerie Shorter isn't one to suffer in silence. When she came down with an excruciating toothache and lost hope of seeing a dentist, she took matters into her own hands. I knew that I had to go through another night of no sleeping. Um, so that's when I decided that I was going to pull the tooth. With the help of a bottle of wine she'd won from her local bowling club, and a pair of pinch-nose pliers, the 65-year-old great-grandmother attacked the root of her problem quite literally. And it really took the shine off that free bottle of wine from the bolo, too. <laughs> so why do we treat our mouths so differently to the rest of our bodies? Well, it turns out it's because of one bad decision nearly 200 years ago. When the first dental school opened in Baltimore in 1840, the local College of Medicine refused to add dental instruction to the medical course because the doctors thought that dentistry wasn't real medicine. Of course, back then, doctors also thought it was a great idea to give morphine to fussy babies. <laughs> But while doctors didn't want the dentists to be doctors back then, these days, dentists don't want to be doctors now. The Australian Dental Association lobbies against dental services being covered by Medicare. And even if we did put more money into existing public clinics, it wouldn't solve the problem for one crucial reason. More money in the public system doesn't buy you more dentists. Private practice is lucrative, private practice is more interesting. You don't get stuffed into mostly emergency type care as public dentists do. And so it's almost impossible to attract more dentists to work for the public dental service. Dentists can earn almost double the salary in private practice. So if you want to know why your teeth aren't part of your body, remember that Rob wants to keep it that way. <laughs> no wonder he can't show his face on television.